In this video, we're going to talk about the implementation of our front end. This is a JavaScript application that runs inside a browser, and it talks over HTTP with our API backend service. It's written using Ember.js, so if you're familiar with Ember, you'll probably find this really straightforward. And if you're not, hopefully it'll still be OK. Here's what the application looks like. Up at the top, we have some UI for creating a new to-do item. Creating one instantly adds it to the list, and it's persisted to the API server. Then there's a component for each to-do item, which includes controls for toggling the completed status of each item or deleting it altogether. Again, these changes are instantly sent to the API server. Let's take a look at the code. I'm going to skip over most of it because it's in the sample you can download alongside this video. I just want to point out how this application is connected to our Python service. This is what's called a model class. It's called todo.js. And the fact of its name tells Ember where in the URL space to look for these things. And the content of this file just says, here are the kinds of things you should look for in the JSON that comes back from the server. The next tab over here is called the application adapter. This is how Ember figures out how and where on the internet to store data. Here we're using a standard REST adapter that comes with Ember. And it's expecting JSON to come back over HTTP with some conventions for the data format and the methods supported. Now, in order to support all of this REST adapter's functionality, we've actually had to change our API server some. In the previous video, we only had handlers for get and post methods. And we've actually had to implement the put and delete methods as well. Here they are down at the bottom. I'm not going to get into this too much, because again, you can download this code and take a look at it yourself. All right, let's get back to the front end. The development experience you'll see is already pretty nice. First, let's go back to our shell. We're going to go ahead and start up our API backend by using Docker Compose. Then in my other tab here, I'm going to start up an Ember development server. We're going to do Ember serve proxy HTTP API. Now this proxy flag tells Ember, I know you're going to be asking for some data from the server, and the Ember server can't give it that data. So here's where to look for it instead. So any kind of AJAX request will go to this server instead of the default Ember server, which doesn't know anything about where the data is stored. So we'll go ahead and run that. And it does a build, which converts all of your application source code into one big blob of JavaScript. And it generates an index.html file and some CSS, all of the stuff that you need in order to run this in the browser. So now, if I go back to my browser, I can hit refresh, and we'll see here is the UI. Now, this application is live, so I can type in some things, refresh the page, and they'll come back again because they're all stored in the back end. What's more, this view will automatically reload if I change the source code. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back here. We'll take a look at the top level template that we've got here. I'll just insert a word. Now I'm going to slide back to this other view. And you'll see that it refreshes, and there we have the change. This provides a really tight loop when you're hacking on an application. It's really great especially if you can keep both of these windows in view at the same time. You can edit your source code, just hit save, and the browser, even though you never switched over to it, will just reload and you get to see your changes. Really, really nice development experience. All right, so what have we learned? We wrote an Ember application that runs inside the browser. We set it up so that it will query our Dockerized API container for all of its actual data, and we got a glimpse at what the development experience is like for this. There are even more tools that make developing in Ember even nicer. In the next video, we'll go ahead and put this application into Docker and get it running on our development system without the Ember server involved at all.